Hello biology students! We're going to be talking about cellular respiration today, which is another chemical reaction. We are still in our theme one, which is quarter one, and now again like photosynthesis in our second topic within that theme, and our second set of notes. Let's learn about this new chemical reaction, cellular respiration. Our first outline header title is going to be Roman numeral number one. List the organisms that do this reaction, which we'll be abbreviating CR for space and cellular respiration is such a long thing. And to answer this question, I've kind of given you a hint with these pictures. What organisms do you think do this reaction? Well, this looks like a lot of different types of organisms, and you are exactly right. All organisms do this reaction. Notice how much I'm emphasizing this. I would put it in caps. I would bold this. I would kiss it, star it. All living things do this reaction. All categories of life. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's single-celled, plant, fungus, you or I. We all have to do this reaction to stay alive. So what is it? Why is it so important? Well, let's dig deeper and learn in the next slide. So Roman numeral number two, we're going to diagram this chemical reaction, cellular respiration. And again, we're going to use these vocab words, reactant and product, to label the different parts of the equation. So here we have the equation as sugar plus sign, and then we have oxygen. And then along an arrow, we have water, carbon dioxide, and energy. We're going to ignore what this ATP thing is for now. All we need to know is the end here is energy. And so last time we learned that anything on the left side of an arrow in a reaction is called a reactant and anything on the right side of a reaction or chemical equation is going to be the end results or products so let's divvy that up here so the left side those reactants or things that need to go into the chemical um, reaction are called reactants oxygen and sugar and then those products are that usable energy thing here carbon dioxide and water so unlike photosynthesis where it was just the same thing no matter what plant or producer was doing it, there are two different types of cellular respiration, which is why we have to have this new section in our notes, Roman numeral number two, to compare these two different types. And again, if you don't want to write cellular respiration all the way around, you could abbreviate it C and then R. So here's those two types, and they are new vocab words, so make sure you highlight them. The first one is anaerobic, and that prefix a or an always means not, okay? So anaerobic means without using oxygen, because that word aerobic, aerobic, sounds like the word air, or air for oxygen, where that prefix an means without or not oxygen. Okay, and then the other version or type of cellular respiration is the opposite of this. So if the first type is without oxygen, what do you think the second type is? Ah, you are so smart. You're right. Aerobic. Okay, so if one is anaerobic without oxygen, the other one is aerobic with oxygen. So this process can happen two different ways. <gasps> as you're breathing, okay, or if there's no breathing. And some organisms actually live their whole lives without any oxygen. They live in the deep depths of the sea where there's very little oxygen. And they only do this process. But you and I, where do we live better? With oxygen or without? What do you think? Yeah, we do this one, right? So a good example of aerobic is humans. We do this one a little bit only if we really have to, and we can't survive without oxygen for very long. Actually, if we exercise too hard, okay, and sometimes too hard is a good thing, right? You're really pushing yourself. We do a little bit of that, and we get that kind of soreness in our legs called lactic acid. It happens sometimes, but what we really do and we have to do to survive is this one. Okay, later in the year, we'll learn about other organisms that can only rely on this. But yeah, so characteristic of life that's not really one that we thought, 
Oxygen is not required to stay alive for all living things. It is for us, but not for all living things. So if we had oxygen as a characteristic of life before, we got to cross it off. Not a characteristic of life. Last but not least, let's summarize some of the differences between this new reaction cellular respiration with photosynthesis. And so this top one has sunlight as a reactant. And so this one has to be photosynthesis. And here we have this guy, right, with energy at the end. Okay, here we have sugar at the beginning in cellular respiration, but sugar's at the end for that. We don't need to redraw this because it's actually in our notes already from a previous part of this notes and another notes for uh, photosynthesis. But what are some patterns we're seeing here? Hmm. Hmm. The reactants of one process, here, energy, water, carbon dioxide, are the products of the other, water, carbon dioxide, energy. One is just the flipped version of the other one. It's a cycle. They're opposites. And we're going to practice this in class as well as do a lab in class about cellular respiration. But yeah, the really important thing that I'd like you to star here or even highlight is these are opposite processes. All right. Good job, guys. See you next time.